he sleeps the full night, doesn't revise, he appears for the examination, he fails. Who's to blame you? Not Allah. So Allah knew you would think crooked like that before the examination and you will not revise, you will not study and you will fail. So who's responsible you? Allah has it in advance because their knowledge of ilm gave you and I don't have. So how do you know what's going to happen? So if you start thinking negative, there's going to be a problem. That's the reason you should understand as far as, far as Qadr is concerned, a true mu'min, a true believer. Whatever has happened in the past, he says Qadr Allah. I mean, suppose I had an accident. I don't brood over it. Oh, why did I do the accident? I should have done this, I should have done that. You said, okay, fine, it's the Qadr of Allah and you accept what has happened. But about the future, you cannot put Qadr as an excuse for not striving for your future. It is not the deed of a believer to not strive for the future saying, Allah has already written the Qadr. It is for the past. What's happened in the past, don't cry over spilt milk. Whatever has happened, if you go in loss in business, you say Alhamdulillah. If you go profit, you say Alhamdulillah. Allah says you may love a thing which may not be good for you and you may hate a thing which is good for you. Allah knows and you don't know. So whatever happens is the Qadr Allah. But for the future, for the future, you have to strive. You have to struggle. Then only will you be a true moment. You have to follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What, what are the things that are faraiz? What are the things which are mustab? What are the things which are makru? What are the things which are haram? So don't do the haram. Do the faraiz. Do as much as mustab, mustab as you can. Strive harder. So to think negative like that is not like a true moment. What happens in the past has happened. You can take lessons from it for your future. You can learn from a mistake. But don't try over spilled milk. Hope that answers the question. The third question is from Abdullah from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. If Allah has written the destiny of all human beings 50,000 years before creation of the heavens and the earth, then why do we do duas for health or wealth or knowledge? That's a very good question. That if Allah has written the destiny and the destiny cannot be changed, then why should we do dua? There's a hadith of a beloved prophet mentioned in Ibn Majah, volume number one, hadith number 90, that destiny cannot be changed except by supplication, except by dua. So the only thing that will change the destiny is the dua. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Rad, chapter number 13, verse number 39, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can erase or confirm whatever he pleases, from the mother of the books. If Allah pleases, he can erase it, he can change it, he can confirm it from the mother of the book. Now let me tell you that whatever is mentioned in the Qadr, it remains the same. So what do we mean by, why should we make dua? For example, you appeared for an examination and your paper was atrocious. You did not do well. And you know for sure you're going to fail. What do you do? You come home and you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My paper didn't go well. Please pass me. Please pass me. You know, and you pray a lot to Allah and Allah accepts your prayer and he passes you. So originally it was mentioned in the destiny that this particular student, when he appears for his bachelor's examination, he doesn't fare well, he's going to fail. But he comes home. And he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah accepts his prayer and Allah passes him. Allah even knows whether you're going to pray or not. Don't you think Allah knows whether you're going to pray or not? Allah knows in advance, billions of years before, millions of years before, whether you're going to pray or not. So even that is mentioned in the Qadr, that you will be praying. Actually, you were failing. You came home and you prayed. And Allah also knows in advance whether he'll accept your prayer or not. So it's mentioned in the Qadr. You did not do well, you did not study well, you are going to fail, you come home and you pray, Allah accepts your prayer and you pass. So in the Qadr, actually it was because you did not do well, you were going to fail. But Allah knows in advance that you will be praying. Allah knows in advance he will be accepting your prayer and passing you. So in the Qadr it was mentioned you are going to fail, but you pray and Allah passed you. Similarly now, it is always, we don't know what is going to happen in the future. Of the past, we say Qadr Allah. 
You don't know what's going to happen in the future. So you pray. Oh Allah, give me knowledge. Oh Allah, give me barakah in my earning. Oh Allah, pass me in the examination. Because you don't know. You should pray. You, you may not know that the business you're doing was actually going in loss. And Allah accepts your prayer and gives you a profit. So the right act of a woman is do dua as much as possible. Supplicate. Ask for the smallest thing. Ask for the biggest thing. You can ask anything from Allah as many times as you want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves answering the prayers of his servants. But whatever happens, don't be sad. Whatever takes place, say this is the qadr of Allah. I accept it. This is the best for me. And let me give an example. That there was a person who was supposed to catch a flight. And you're supposed to go from London to New York. And in New York, he was going to click a deal in his business, which would get him a profit of minimum $10 million. So while he's going to the airport, there's a traffic jam and he misses the plane. And he says, this is the worst day of my life. How could I miss the flight? I've lost $10 million. Why is he returning back? Again, this traffic jam. On the radio, he hears that the flight that was flying from London to New York, after it takes, takes off, it, it bursts and all the passengers in the plane, they die. And the person says, this is the best day of my life. I was supposed to be in that plane and I missed it and now I'm alive. So Allah says, you may love a thing which is not good for you and you may hate a thing which is good for you. You don't know, Allah knows. That's the reason whatever happens, we say, Qadr Allah and you should be happy. You missed a flight, I tried my best and this is the Qadr of Allah, whatever this may be the best for me. This is how a true mu'min lives his life and he always leads a life in which he's happy, he's content. So that will be the path to his Jannah. There are many questions. On the Facebook you have many Nisha George, you have Mintu Ghazi, El Kahidi Musa, Ismail Khan, Kalesha Sheikh, Sharir, Javed Anwar, Muhammad Zakir, Imran Yamikar, Assalamu Alaikum, Walikum Assalam, Rahmatullah Barakatu, Ayman Khan, Abdul Wahab, all my salams to all of you, Ubaidullah Ahmad, Lobna Shaiban, Mullah Muhammad Shamim, Yasin Ali, this is from the Facebook. On the YouTube, we have many, Muhammad Shahid, Halal Street, London. I don't know which Halal Street is this. I've been to London several times. I don't know there's a halal street in London. Mumbai Shahid, uh, Taslima Shamim, King Kicks, Noshin Fatima, Asad Mirza, Noman Qureshi, Asfia Asfia, Kamal Master, Milan Sheikh, and all the brothers and sisters. Walikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa Thank you for your, for your duas. And stay twin, tuned in. And you have from the Facebook, Muhammad Ibrahim Muhammad, I have huge respect to you, Dr. Zakir. It's a privilege to have you in the world. Without you, the world would be empty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guard and protect you. Muhammad Ashraf, assalamu alaikum. From Pakistan, in every age, God has gifted people, men like you. For the guidance to right direction, God bless you. Razak Raj, you are superpower of lecturer. I salute you. Salman Sayyid, this generation is lucky to have Dr. Zakir. New generation might not get one. Thank you, Allah, for giving us Zakir. I thank all of you. It's because of your dua that whatever limited dawah that I can do, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept my efforts. And may not hold me responsible for what you think of me. May you make me better than what you think of me. And may you forgive all my faults. The question is from YouTube by Abdullah Abu Osama. In this COVID-19 time, can we do etikaf at home? 
one of the criteria to do etikaf is it should be in the mosque. And, and in Jama Mosque, where the Friday prayer is there, 